Okay, I'm back. I had to. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. I yeah that. So I looked at the policy because Rhonda pulled it up on the hospital computer, and I was looking at the policy, and um, it says anytime a person comes in that doesn't have medical records, um, or they feel that something isn't right, they can drug test. And I asked them, how is it that you can drug test without permission? How is it that you can take this baby's urine without her parents' permission to test her for something? Y'all ask permission for everything, but you don't have to have permission to drug test? It don't sound right. And Rhonda, who works at the hospital, was so rude. So I asked for patient advocate. Let me talk to patient advocate. We sat in that room for an hour waiting for patient advocate because at first they said she was in a training. That's what the social worker said. Oh, she's in a training. Um, when we finally did get to patient advocate, her name is Amy. Amy came up and was like, well, as soon as I came up, I jumped out that costume and I was like, I thought you was in a training. What were you doing in the costume, Amy? Oh, it was a training event. So I said, the sad part is throughout this whole hospital in labor and delivery, there's only one patient advocate. So if a patient is feeling threatened by your staff, what do they do if you're not available? Well, I don't know. So you don't have a team, Amy? Well, yeah, you know, we have people who work, but, you know, they can't come up here and do this. But we have people that, you know, so you guys could have called somebody else. But instead, you didn't. Y'all are trying to prolong it to see what y'all can do. If y'all can call CPS, if y'all can take this lady, baby, is that what y'all trying to do? Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. So Rhonda's standing to the side, rolling her eyes, and full attitude. And I said, Rhonda, we no longer need you. You can leave. And she just kind of looked. I'm advocating the hell out of this because y'all got my clients messed up. And the dad was like, you could have been left, Rhonda. You were no help. You wasn't. You came in a room full of people, kicked the client luggage, like, get this out of my way so I can sit down. What makes you feel that it's okay for you to sit down? This isn't a personal call. We're not buddy-buddy. You came to work. Stand up. And I was like, what makes you feel like it's okay to sit down? Well, you know, they said when people sit down, they're less threatened. Who's threatened by you? What makes you feel like you walk in the room and people are threatened by you because you're a white woman? Well, I, I, I was just saying, you know, because uh, that's what it was. Yeah, you figured I'd sit in here and, and I won't be, you know, they'll be cool with the drug. No, they, we're not. You have two doctors in this room. The dad and the brother are both pharmacists. Mom has a corporate job. You have a educated doula here, birth and postpartum, <laughs> who's also a CASA volunteer for the state of Georgia. So she knows how to advocate. She knows how to protect her clients and those babies. So let's do this. And I also know childbirth rights. Please Google your childbirth rights before you go to any hospital. Just Google childbirth rights in, in my state. Print that out. Look at it. Look at the laws for childbirth in your state. Have that paperwork with you. Know your rights. Don't just go by what the hospital and the doctors and the nurses because they acting cool. Know your rights at all costs. If I didn't know half of the stuff I knew, those people, were they were really trying them. So we sitting there talking and me, the dad, and the uh, brother-in-law we're bouncing back and forth off each other asking questions and everybody's like oh what well, oh, oh, I, 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 I don't know I don't know the answer to that so let, oh, man, let me go back so Rhonda was in there talking and a nurse walks in and says hey Rhonda Jennifer's on the phone she wants to talk to you and I said if this isn't an emergency why are people calling her out this room when she is supposed to be helping somebody who's outright. 
you guys messed up and y'all still hadn't asked, answered the question on why did you drug test this baby? So Rhonda was like, oh, I, I need to take this. So the person, Jennifer, was Rhonda's supervisor. I guess she was trying to see what damage control or what was going on. Girl, what's going on? What didn't happen? But you called her out of the room. You couldn't wait till she finished with us. You had to interrupt what was going on so you could get the tea on what happened. So Rhonda leaves the room. We're talking to Amy. And Amy does this. I've been with the hospital for 30 years. And I just, I said, here come the white woman tears. I just don't understand how is. And then this lady named Nicole comes in. Nicole was like, hey, who's ready to get discharged? I said, thank you, God, because I did not want to see Amy crying for no reason. It took you an hour to get up here, so you wasn't, it wasn't that important to you. So why are you crying now? I don't need your tears. Suck it up, buttercup. Mm -mm -mm. So, Nicole comes in the room. Nicole says, you know, getting mom discharged. Now, I'm holding the baby because I'm, she's in the sun. I'm standing by the window making sure she gets some sun and stuff. And that's something that I love to do is make sure that the babies, you know, get natural vitamin D. Like standing in the sun, in the mirror. I mean, not the mirror. In the window so they can, you know, listen to their new environment. And they can get the sun because they've been in the dark. So, Nicole comes in and she was like, oh, let me see the little one. And as Nicole is taking the monitor off of the baby's foot, she says, I bet this will be the last time this little one has an ankle monitor on. The brother-in-law says, Nicole, I don't know if you know, but that was very inappropriate to say. It was just a joke. What's funny about that saying, I bet this is the last time. Are you saying that it's not even an anchor monitor? So what was, it's actually for security so nobody can take the baby out of the hospital. But why, why did you think that that was funny? <laughs> yeah, don't make that joke again. There's nothing funny about, I bet this was the last time this little one is going to be wearing an ankle monitor. There's nothing funny about that at all. Read the room. So I said, you know what? Let me get out of here. Now, me and the father were talking and I said the craziest thing was that he was telling me that he hadn't seen security the whole time they were at the hospital. He said, but when he started asking questions and started asking why they were doing X, Y, Z, he noticed security started walking the floor a lot. And I told him, you know what? I noticed the same thing. I went outside to take a call and I came back and security was walking around and he looked at me and I looked him dead in his eyes. Is there a problem? Oh, I, I, I was just, I was just getting ready to say good morning. Okay, good morning. And he walked off. I wanted everybody in that hospital to know you don't intimidate me at all, sweetheart. None of you guys. Y'all tried it. Y'all drug test a baby without their parents' permission because y'all didn't do what you were supposed to do. You guys never asked for records. I had the PDF on my phone from her records. Dad had the PDFs on his phone, and Mom had them. We, all of us had the midwife's information and she could have faxed over all of the stuff, but nobody at that hospital ever asked. And then Savannah said, well, I reached out to the midwife and she never reached back out. That's because you reached out at 10 o'clock at night, Savannah. Who's up at 10 o'clock at night? Did you try to do it again in the morning to make sure that they received the fax? Did you call over there? You didn't. So y'all assumed all the way around that mom had no medical care. She had never been anywhere. Y'all also didn't go back and look at the computer because she was there in October. So those files are linked together. She didn't have any ID on her when she went into labor. 
So you guys had to know who she was because she had bands on. We get the baby home. And um, we were trying to, you know, mom said the baby had kind of latched in the hospital and she was talking to, what? Well, let me go back because I missed a lot. We getting the baby, you know, checked and stuff, and we get downstairs in the car, and um, I'm in the front seat, and the baby and mom are in the back seat, and I just so happened here, <laughs> and I was like, you okay? And she was like, queen, I didn't even get a chance to get my baby hospital pictures. They robbed me of that experience. And my heart, it's so many things that you want to do as a first-time mom. You want to make sure that you get the hospital stuff. You and the baby got the matching robes. She didn't get a chance to get any of that done. She said the hospital made her feel as if she was a cracked-out mom who didn't care about her baby. All because they didn't look at the records. They ripped a first time mom. They ripped away so many amazing memories. She delivered in a car. She had a natural birth, her first child. And she's a daughter. She has a daughter. And y'all made her feel as if she was no one because you guys didn't make sure to do the proper paperwork. You guys didn't look at the records. You guys didn't, you could, you just, something in somebody's mind said there's no way this black woman could have had that baby naturally. She had to be on some kind of drugs. Something just isn't right. You assumed. And because you assumed wrong, you took something that was so amazing and positive and turned it into a bad tornado storm that had a ripple effect. We get home with the baby. We get home with mom. And um, I was like, you know, you want to start? You want to try to feed? And she was like, yeah, I try. And the baby was crying. And she was like, I just don't think I'm producing anything. And she was like, am I that bad of a mom that I can't even produce milk for my child? As a doula, as a breastfeeding counselor, I know what stress does when mom is trying to breastfeed. This is why I always talk to my moms about making sure that they journal to release that stress and it's not bottled up in them. We had to put the baby on formula just to kind of submit, do a um, substitution just for an ounce, you know, make sure she got an ounce. I still made sure that she was on mom's breast, you know, just, you know, to see if it, uh, something would come out. And she was still getting like half an ounce and um, she just cried. So, dad was supposed to surprise her with, you know, some of the family coming in, new baby. They was going to do pictures and all of that stuff. He was getting um, the grandparents because she's the first grandbaby on both sides, mom and dad's side. So, dad was going to get the hospital picture, you know, the newborn hospital picture and, you know, put it on his shirt and it was supposed to be. Me and mom's first Christmas, me and granny's first Christmas together, you know, all of that cute stuff. But she didn't get her pictures at the hospital. So the dad was like, I don't, I don't know what to do now. Cause that was the only gift, 
you know, something that lasts forever. Um, when you assume that somebody is something, you always mess up. Never judge a book by its cover. Because she was black, you assume she didn't have medical records and she had to be on drugs. The fact that hospitals drug test babies and moms without their permission, it just don't sit right with me. And I did a TikTok video and there was so many moms saying, oh, they drug test me because I got Medicaid or because I'm on state insurance. Every time I go to the doctor, they're drug and test me. They drug test me. And I was like, well, did you know that? They was like, no. One lady said that they gave her some medicine and they drug test her and they tried to call CPS to take her baby. Like, is this what y'all doing? Y'all are sneak drug testing moms and babies so y'all can call CPS on these people to take their babies from them? And from what I'm hearing, it's mostly black women. Like, make it make sense. You just went through a traumatic labor. And now they coming in your room talking about some, yeah, well, we did a drug test and, and, and this came up. And I'm finding out that half of the time the drug tests be wrong. And y'all have CPS cases on these people for no reason. So my question is, does the hospital have some kind of thing with CPS where they get a kickback if they call them to come and get these babies? Like, what is going on? It's not making sense. Y'all drug test this lady baby because y'all assumed she didn't have medical care. I was so hurt, and I am. Like, I'm real big on Christmas. I love Christmas. I ain't even went to buy my husband nothing because I'm just not in the energy of getting up to do anything. My energy is drained. I feel like all of my hard work as a doula and everything that I did to make sure her labor was good, it went down the drain. I've never had a client to have to experience something like this. And it hurts. It hurts on so many different levels. And it hurts more because I'm a black woman. And I had a traumatic labor. And when you see somebody else go through it, because somebody made an assumption, it's like, when do it stop? Why couldn't she just be a woman that had a baby in a car? Why did y'all assume anything? And then the, the nurses were so rude while we were asking questions and stuff. And it's like, are y'all mad that she's not on drugs? Like, why are you trying to treat her so mean? What? Why? The hospital had some lady, I think her last name was Wu or Wan or something, reach out to the family. And um, she was like, oh, yeah, we're investigating what happened. And while we're investigating, we're going to put the file on we're going to put your account on hold so there won't be any payment due. Like, when do the insults stop? What made you feel like they didn't have the money to pay their hospital bill? Like, you just assume, oh, they're black, they're trying to complain so they don't have a bill. Why, why put the account on hold? If this is what y'all are doing as part of your policy, why are you putting the account on hold? Why are you assuming that these people don't have the money to pay it? Like, why? A lot of bedside manner training needs to go on in Texas, Health Hewley South, bedside manner, urban manner, because y'all are not equipped to, to talk to black people. Rhonda couldn't even look at me when she talked to me. She had to look each and every other way. I guess she wasn't used to a doula advocating for a client. 
but she wanted to make sure, you know, I sat down so I wouldn't be a threat. Baby, you didn't threat nobody. Because I'm telling you now, the blood of Jesus is strong. I had to step out the room and pray three different times. Because evil twin. <laughs> <laughs> that's your client and I was so proud of them because they stood their ground they made sure to speak up they made sure to ask questions but y'all ruined a first time mom delivery all because you made an assumption they assumed she didn't have medical records Nicole with her funny joke. Amy is so busy she can't be a patient advocate. And Rhonda, I do what I want because I don't want to be a threat. I don't think I'm going to be able to do Texas. Now, I did a birthing center in Oklahoma with a client. And when I tell you, if I could, I send all my, if you in Oklahoma and you email me, I will send you that birthing center information. Everybody on that staff was freaking amazing. The midwife was like, hey, queen, here's some paperwork that we have that we use, like for our in-house doulas that you can have. You need some water. Here's our ice machine. I mean, them folks made me feel like I was at home. So I know it's not all white people and I know it's not all hospitals or birthing centers. It was just that hospital. I know it because I've been in different hospitals and I've never had that problem. I've been to birthing centers and never had that problem. I've had white nurses who were like, hey, you know, X, Y, Z, let me give you this, da, 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 because they know like, oh, well, did you know this? All right, look up this because this is getting ready to change. There are a lot of evil people who work in healthcare, And a lot of them are in labor and delivery. And they try to do whatever they can to make sure that they traumatize black women. And it has to stop. There's no way that it is that it should be right to drug test a mom and baby without their permission. Because you assume they're on drugs or because they have state insurance, we drug test them. Do y'all drug test the people in the Senate? Do state representatives get drug tested? Do the mayors and the governors of these places get drug tests? Surprise drug tests anytime they go to the doctors? Y'all want to drug test them, but I've never heard of anybody doing parenting classes for anybody that's on any kind of state insurance or anybody that's getting state assistance. Why not give them parenting classes, help them out? But you want to make it worse because you want to drug test them so y'all can take those babies. I am so tired of crying. It's taken me a lot to do this video. And I only stopped once and had a good cry. It's emotionally draining to see what black women go through during labor and delivery. I became a doula to help, and I'm going to advocate every chance that I get. But Texas Healy Health South, whatever hospital, Fort Worth, Texas, y'all were dead wrong. I would never come back to that hospital. Never. I... I I'm making sure to do my Google review to let y'all know. Parents, before you go to hospitals, please look at reviews. Please ask people. Please ask around for good hospitals, good OBGs. Ask people. Do reviews. If you don't like the hospital, the OBG or anything, change it. Change it. 
Keep changing until you find somebody who's going to take care of you and they mean it. If you guys need a birth plan, it's on my website. If y'all need a pregnancy journal, it's on my website. If you don't know what to take to the hospital, it's on my website. I'm going to hold up my end and make sure that I help you guys. But we got to get a change in this health care. Because there's no reason that women should have drug tests done. And a lot of times they don't even know about it. And the fact that y'all was supposed to do the drug test an hour after the baby was born. And y'all tried to do it the next day. Almost 20 something hours after the baby was born. Y'all were trying to do a drug test. And it was on y'all policy because Rhonda showed it. If I had my way, Rhonda would have to go through training, sensitivity training, bedside manner training, do some volunteer work, because obviously she doesn't like working with black people. Savannah lies. Savannah was just like, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, it's court ordered. That's all I know. And it's not. So you falsely lied about telling them that that drug test was court ordered. You lied to those folks' face. I'm going to go ahead and finish. Thank you guys for watching. I know it was a long video, but thank you. Thank you.